How will we journey to Mars? Mars, Mars, Mars. It's all everyone has been talking about recently. Humans do always have a deep desire to explore and seek adventure, from our youngest to our eldest. And when they set their minds to something, they become unstoppable. Throughout history, we've traveled across continents, sailed ships, flown airplanes, and even launched rockets to discover new lands and push the boundaries of what's possible. And until now, no challenge has been too impossible to overcome. But there's one adventure that we haven't fully tackled yet. And it's a big one, a journey from Earth to Mars. Can you imagine being part of a crew that lands on the red planet and takes the first steps on its surface? That would be wild. You might have heard of a show called The Expanse and many more that have gained a massive following in recent years. It follows a crew of characters in a futuristic world where humans have colonized part of our solar system, from Earth to Mars to the asteroid belt. They explore new worlds, uncover conspiracies, and fight for survival in a universe full of danger. And while we're not quite at the level of interplanetary travel just yet, the thrilling glimpse into what the future of space exploration could look like gives us the motivation to keep going. Can you imagine building territory and expanding to Mars? It would be incredible to be part of that journey and make history. Who knows what we might discover on our way to the fourth planet from the Sun? Let's see together what this trip would look like. Previous Missions So what have we sent so far to Mars? Mars is an interesting world that is covered in dust and has a very thin atmosphere. Despite its harsh conditions, Mars is a dynamic planet that experiences seasons, has polar ice caps, and features canyons and extinct volcanoes all of which we are a little familiar with on Earth. Scientists have even found evidence that Mars was even more attractive in the past, which is exciting to explore and actually makes it the most explored planet so far. We have sent a few different types of robotic explorers to Mars in order to learn more about it. The most advanced of these robots is called Perseverance, which just landed on Mars in February of 2021. It's the largest rover ever sent to another planet and has the ability to take samples of the alien soil and rocks. There's also a helicopter named Ingenuity that came along with Perseverance. Perseverance isn't the only spacecraft currently on Mars. In fact, there are quite a few. Recently, China even became the second country ever to successfully land a rover on Mars. There are also orbiters that study Mars by flying around it and take images, like the HOPE mission launched by the United Arab Emirates and a few others. The HOPE probe is actually helping us map Mars fully. Check it out. All of this exploration has taught scientists a lot about the history of Mars. They found a lot of evidence that it used to be much warmer and wetter with a thicker atmosphere. Do you think studying Mars will help us better understand our own planet and how it fits into the larger scheme of our solar system? How will we get there? Artemis missions To get to Mars, we first need to set up a permanent station on the Moon. Why? Well, going from the Moon to Mars is much easier than going straight from Earth to Mars. Earth's gravity and thick atmosphere make it tough to launch things into space all at once. It sure is nice to live on Earth, but it makes space travel tricky. On the Moon, though, we don't have those problems. Living on the moon will be tough, but if we can make it work, the moon would be the perfect place to launch missions to other planets. NASA's Artemis program has a long-term goal to use the moon as a spaceport and gateway to the solar system. Missions 4 through 10 of the Artemis program will focus on learning how to live on the moon. We'll find ways to use the resources that are already there, like rocks and metals to build new infrastructure. We'll also try to find water and oxygen. Meanwhile, NASA and its partners will keep exploring Mars with robots. They'll even deploy a drone called Ingenuity to fly around Mars and take pictures. NASA's next big project is to build a space station that orbits Mars. The space station won't be a stopping point for trips to Mars. It will also be a place where astronauts can live for longer periods of time. One of the goals of exploring Mars is to bring back samples of Mars rock and soil. This will mark the end of one-way trips to Mars and help us learn even more about the Red Planet. NASA never fails to come up with the best of plans to realize humanity's wildest dreams. They're working on multiple missions and getting everything ready right now. 
The first real step will be the Artemis 10 mission, which will bring cargo to the moon in preparation for the Mars mission. Then there will be the Artemis 11 mission, which will deploy more cargo to the moon. Both missions will include a trip to the lunar surface. But the real excitement begins with Artemis 12. This mission will bring the Mars 1 human lander to the gateway station near the moon, which will have a crew of four people staying there for 134 days. NASA plans to use Gateway as the starting point to send humans to Mars. The astronauts will take off on a special ship with the Mars 1 human lander and travel to Mars. They'll stay in a pressurized vehicle that will be their home for 30 days on Mars. This vehicle will also be their rover so they can explore the planet. It's important that the vehicle does double duty because even in the reduced gravity of Mars, it takes time to adjust from space travel, especially from spending a long time in zero-gravity environments. Who knows what amazing discoveries the astronauts will make on their mission to Mars? We can't wait to find out. Space Travel So how do you think we would be getting people from Earth to Mars? To be able to do this, they're developing something called a transit habitat, which will use a mix of chemical and electric propulsion stages to power the journey. This habitat will be able to support a crew of four people and take them all the way to Mars and back again. Once they get to Mars, landing is a bit of a tricky process. The most recent Perseverance rover actually landed using a special capsule that's similar to how people return to Earth from space. The capsule had a huge parachute to slow its descent, but since the atmosphere on Mars is too thin for the parachute alone to provide a soft landing, the rover had to use a jetpack to slow down via rockets. Fun fact, two of the crew members will stay in orbit during the entire mission, while the other two go down to the surface. Did you know that there are two ways you can go to Mars? One way is a short-stay mission, which lasts 30 days on Mars, but involves a long and grueling 403-day return trip through deep space. During the trip to Mars, the spacecraft uses a gravitational boost around Venus to get there in only 217 days. The other way to go to Mars is a long-stay mission. This involves direct course to Mars that takes 210 days to reach the Red Planet. Once there, the mission lasts a whopping 496 days, requiring extensive planning and preparation before deployment. The return trip is then only 210 days, which is shortened thanks to an ideal transfer window. Of course, the current technology we have limits our abilities to make these journeys faster and smoother. However, NASA is always working on improving propulsion systems and technology, so we may see faster and more comfortable trips to Mars in the future. Future Spacecrafts NASA and DARPA are teaming up to create a super cool spacecraft that will be powered by a nuclear thermal rocket engine. It's called the Demonstration Rocket for Agile Cis Lunar Operations, or DRACO for short. This spacecraft will be able to travel faster, carry more stuff, go further distances and maneuver through space much more easily than any other vehicle we've ever used before. One major benefit of this new engine is that it will increase science payload capacity and provide higher power for instrumentation and communication. The engine works by using a fission reactor to generate high temperatures, which heats up a liquid propellant that is then used to propel the spacecraft. This new nuclear engine is going to be three to five times more efficient than traditional rocket engines, meaning it will take a lot less time to get to places like Mars. Instead of eight months, it could take as little as 45 days. The Draco project is set to come online in less than five years, expected to be integrated with an experimental spacecraft by 2027, and will help establish a space transportation capability for an Earth-Moon economy. And who knows? Maybe within the next decade, astronauts could travel to Mars on a ship powered by the nuclear engine. Of course, there could be some delays along the way. But we humans are optimistic and love a good challenge. We refuse to stay in one place for too long, and going to Mars is just the next step in our interstellar journey. To recap, our journey to Mars is a daunting task, but humanity has never backed down from a challenge. NASA's Artemis program is working hard to establish a permanent station on the moon, which will serve as a gateway to the rest of the solar system. The journey to Mars will involve a transit habitat, a special spacecraft that will use a mix of chemical and electric propulsion stages to power the journey. Landing on Mars is a tricky process, but NASA has shown that it is possible 
with the recent successful landing of the Perseverance rover. The future of space exploration looks bright with the development of the nuclear thermal rocket engine and the demonstration rocket for agile cislunar operations. We're excited to see what discoveries await us on our journey to the Red Planet, and we hope you are too. So stay tuned for updates on this exciting project. And don't forget to give our video a thumbs up and subscribe for more space exploration content.